Welcome back to Stage Dive. I am very proud to announce that we have a special limited series coming at you for the month of August this year. I'm hosting and producing a show called The Making of Denver Legends at your mom's house on September 1st, right here in the city. And we have five amazing artists who are performing with me. We have Asan Yugen, Binta Zhang, Resurface, Ego and Friends, and Malcolm Wise. As I do in the podcast, it was really important to me that I share the stories of these artists before I got them together on stage to actually perform. And so I sat down and I interviewed each one of them. And just like all of our guests, they were insightful, they were thoughtful, and there's so much beautiful texture to their lives and to their journeys that we don't get to see until we take the time to ask these questions. So I'm so excited to share their stories with you. I'm so excited that I got to sit down with them. And most importantly, I'm excited for you to get to hear these stories and then come to see them perform on September 1st. Pa. Yeah. Let's start with uh, the big question of like who you are as an artist, you know, like where, where does all of this kind of line up? Like what's the story behind Jack Dawkins? Mm. It's funny because like you've asked me this question before, but the answer evolves as I continue to do this more and more, which is fun. And so like, I like, I feel more and more like I'm just becoming a hype man, which I'm not upset about, but like I'm realizing how valuable it is to just have someone around who is telling other artists, like you are worth investing in your music is dope. You should keep going. Like again, if my whole goal is so that people don't quit, cause I genuinely believe that we need more art in this world. Then the way I do that is both by being an artist myself and showcasing it that way. But I can also be like way more direct with it by just going to more artists and being like, Hey, how can I support you? What do you need? How do we work together? Like, how do we collaborate? Um, and I think I felt, I feel like I spent a lot of time in my head trying to figure out the perfect way or the right way or whatever. And like literally this whole show came because I started an Instagram group chat and was like, Hey, y'all want to do a show? And we were like, I guess, can you tell us more? And like, I had no details planned, but it was like, sure, here's a general idea. And people were like, yeah, let's keep talking. And like, now we're sitting here doing a day of interviews. We have a cipher plan. We're going to do the show. Like sometimes you just have to open your mouth and just create the space for people to step into. And so like, who am I as an artist? Again, it's just like the same love I'm trying to spread through my lyrics and through my music is also the same love I'm trying to show up with as a collaborator, as a show producer, as a fellow artist. Like, and so we've talked about this, like it comes back to love as a feeling, not love as like some abstract concept or like, what does love look like? It's like, does this feel like I'm doing something really good for this person? If the answer is yes, I do it. And if the answer is no, I don't. That's it. And that's it's a cool evolution to watch like through my lens literally and figuratively yes um because when when we met it was very much focused on the artistry and the music and so yep. on and so forth all the things that we both know yep um and now i i feel it's becoming more of like an industry player position mm. in this where like you're not just an artist like you you are evolving into I guess for lack of a better reference, like a Jay-Z type where it's more like you're doing more for the space mm. rather than just making the music. Um, and that's absolutely clear in developing this show. Um, so I guess the question to come from that is like, what, what created that jump from like being an artist, solely an artist to now moving into a space where you are supporting, like what, where's the connection there? Yeah. Yeah. Like, so I think everyone on some intellectual level understands like you can't do things alone. Like, and you can say that all day, but I think once you actually start to see it in practice, that's when you realize like how much more you can achieve when you have good human beings around you. And so like, I feel very lucky. I had a year and a half to be with you and Roger and have that experience of having a team around me and some support. And what I realized is like, we were so focused on what the three of us were doing. And it was very cloistered of just like in the little Jack Dawkins ring of shit. Like, what are we making? What are we sharing? How are we doing it? Blah, 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 blah. We've learned a ton. It's been super valuable. And like, if I can use that knowledge to support people, I definitely want to do that. 
But at some point I realized like, why aren't I using this energy to bring in more artists? Like, why aren't I including more people in this instead of just making about what Jack is doing, what Jack is trying to create. And like, I'll be very honest. Like sometimes I get nervous cause like, I don't want to become a manager. I don't want to become an executive. Like if I do that, that is me reverting to a space that I'm very good at, but it's not really who I am and it's not really what I want to do. And so I'm trying to ride the line of how can I continue to show up as an artist and support myself that way and support people through my music, but also allow other artists to participate that in a way that is way much more about building community than it is just about building something. I feel like we've been building something for almost two years now. And now because we've actually been able to bring more artists in and create opportunities for them. And like I told them all when I met with them at Conway, it's like, I want you to fucking enjoy this. Like, and it sounds stupid, but like people are already like, Oh, you're an artist. So you're not working. So you already must enjoy it. It's like, no, like we're very rarely given the opportunity to really truly like relish in what we're doing. And to just fucking enjoy it. You might get your 15 minutes on stage. You might get the day your song drops. But like, God, is it a lot of work and like a lot of soul searching around that. And so like if I can create a space where people really just get to be seen and celebrated and enjoy that shit. Like I know someone else mentioned, I think it was resurfaced like or no, it was um, it was Malcolm. It was like if you put good in, I don't know what the outcome is going to be, but I know that it will be good. And I'm willing to not know what the outcome is because I so believe in the energy and the intention that's going into it in the first place. And all of this is good for the greater community and the overall um, abundance of the Denver hip hop scene. Totally. Um, Where do you see the Denver hip hop scene now and where do you see it going? It's such a good question. Like I'm I'm trying to figure it out because I feel like what I heard from so many people is, you know, it used to be a very like crabs in a bucket mentality of like, you know, and, and to some extent I get it. Cause I remember having conversations where people said the way it works is one person breaks and that one person will pull people up from that place. And so everyone's trying to be the one person. Maybe that's what the model was. Maybe that is still the model. I don't really know, but I also don't really see that. Um, and so I think the, the funny space I find myself in is like, it would be inappropriate to not honor that people like Trev Rich, Amy Z, they call him AP, 100 Pack Savvy, Trace Chapman. Like they're people who have been creating hip hop in Denver for a long time and who have absolutely created some buzz in the scene. And like so many of the people in this show, Malcolm Resurface, Ego, Asan, Binta, like they're, I feel like they're building community and they're building something really beautiful. And so what I want to be careful about is not saying like there was the old scene and there's the new scene. I think they're connected and I think they're starting to come back together. Like uh, Trev Rich just dropped a project and he said, I'm finally getting back to having fun with this shit. And other people are sharing his music and like you're seeing some of those community seeds start to come back together. And so like my sense is like, Denver went through like a weird life and death cycle where like there was some really cool shit happening and there was some growth. And then there was like a recession of sorts where it sort of retreated. And I now feel like it's really starting to pick up steam and momentum. And like there is, there's, you're just seeing more people out. People are like, we want to support these shows. We want to support these artists. And it's not about picking the winner of like, well, who is going to break? It's like the whole scene is pushing in what feels like a more unified direction. And it's really, really cool to be a part of. Yeah. And I think that there's this general thought that, I mean, and historically speaking, like you see it right where there, there is that one person in the scene that makes it and then they bring everybody else with them. Right. Quote unquote. Yes. Like let's put it that way because at the end of the day, regardless of how it looks right. no matter what, what the optics are around a Kanye coming out of Chicago and bringing Chicago with him, whatever that is. Right. Um, all of those people were still working and there was so hard and there is a community. There was a community that because one person made it, that community also got to make it with them because without the community, that one person would not have made it. Yes. I guess just speak to that. Um, where do you where do you see that at play with community in mind? Yeah. I mean, 
so the the reason the whole story is organized around storytelling is because like through stage dive what i see over and over again is like so many artists just don't get to tell their story and like i like tragic is a very dramatic word but like i think there's truth in that because it's like right here in this city there are these people who are so interesting and so dynamic and have such a beautiful heart and like it's already hard enough to get people to listen to your music let alone hear your story and get more invested in in what you're doing and so you know when you when you look at like one like you know jack harlow is the example that comes to mind for me of like coming out of louisville and bring a lot of people with him it's like the reason he's doing that is not some weird like oh my god i have to put the city on blah 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 like the city is a group of people who are coming to his shows and recording with him and showing up to sessions it's like that like i think that's something that gets lost when people say they're putting on for the city it is it is at once the absolute city is being able to take the name of your city to different places and to celebrate it and have it to be spoken with reverence i think that's really beautiful but uh it was jesse who said like it's, I want to bring my friends. Like I want to bring the people who were here for me and supported me when I was doing well, when I was not doing well. Like, I think it's all of that. And so like, I think the purpose of this show is to start to help push those stories more to the forefront. So the city is not just the name Denver. It's not just the fact that the nuggets won. It's this collection of stories and humans. And like, I was surprised as shit. I feel like all three of the people we've interviewed so far said something along the lines of like, I want to empower people. I talk about that shit all the time. I hadn't necessarily seen them talk about it in the same way, but that means there's something vibrational that is connecting all of us. And I imagine it's part of the reason why I initially loved their shows when I saw them, thought of them to invite to the show. And now they're coming in to do this. And so like, I didn't fucking plan that shit. Like, but, and yet like it's, presenting itself in front of me and I feel like the more we allow people to see that shared vibration that shared heart that shared desire to like really lift a community and, and do something special then it's not just showing up to a show it's not just streaming a song it's building something that everyone is a part of that's really really beautiful it's great now we've talked a lot about the community the show um, all of the happenstance around the show yeah let's bring it back to you and I'm going to ask you one of your questions now, and that is, what is one part of your story that you wish people knew more of? Oh, man. <laughs> like, how many times I have reset my life and the stories that I've told myself. Like, oh, my God. And, I, and it comes very much from an energy of not like, how resilient am I? It is more so like, A, it is okay to genuinely believe that you are made for something and then to find out that you're not or to outgrow something. Like there are things I've done in my life that were so important to me when I was doing them and then eventually I outgrew them and I would go through these weird grieving periods where I'd be like, what, like, why did I change? Why don't I feel the same way? Rather than seeing it as like a necessary and beautiful evolution of me as a human being. And like with music in particular, what I love so much about it is like, I don't even know if we've talked about this. Like I used to get condescended to pretty aggressively by my English teachers of like, he can't write. He's not good with language. He has no structure, blah, blah, blah. Still happened in college. Like I was told for a very long time that I had no literary sense, no ability to write. I was told I didn't have any ability to sing for a very long time in my life. And so I'll be a hundred percent honest, like a small part of me, like the inner child is absolutely screaming from the mountaintops. Like, yeah, fuck you and fuck your negativity and fuck your condescension and fuck you who told me I couldn't do it. Cause I can, and I am. And so like, I don't love that energy, but I honor that it's a part of this journey and there is a bit of a fuck you attitude to it. But the bigger part is like, I was told for decades, literally decades that the things I'm doing now, I couldn't do. I wasn't good enough. I couldn't work toward it. I didn't have the talent and it's fucking made up. And so that doesn't mean you have to go become an artist. It doesn't mean you have to go become an executive. It means you can choose to. If you want to find a way to do it, you have enough within you and your unique set of strengths and, and pieces of personality that make you the human you are to go do what ever the fuck you want to do and anyone who tells you otherwise is operating out of their own fear it has nothing to do with you it has nothing to do with your path so like the part of my story is that like i didn't come from a musical family i didn't have a lot of musical background i was told actively for many many years i could not do this 
Go on Spotify. It's there. Come to this show. It's happening, right? Like, I am making this shit real. And I don't think that's because I am a special person. I think it's because I was willing to look at those stories and say, I refuse to accept that as truth. I'm not going to live my life believing that I cannot do these things. And it's, it's, it's complicated, but also not. It all boils down to that. Can you look at the story, the limiting belief that you're telling yourself and kick it the fuck out of your house? That's it. I love that answer. We've already kind of like taught, touched on it, but I guess to make it a more pointed question, it's um, what do you, what do you love about the Denver hip hop scene? Like mm-hmm. in, in a very specific pointed way. Um, and that doesn't even necessarily have to have to do with the show. Yep. Um, it can be just in general. What do you, what do you love about the hip hop scene out here? And like, why, why is it, what makes it so different mm. as a follow up? Yeah, that's a great question. I, th- I think it really is like the way people are starting to show up for and support each other feels even since I've been here, it hasn't been that long. It's been a little over two years. Like even in that time, I feel like I'm seeing more people show up for each other, find support for different things that they want to do, be more comfortable asking for what they need. Like the switch that feels like it's flipped is that like the possibility of this really growing feels more tangible. It feels more real. It feels like there's more, more, more momentum behind it. And it's changing the way people show up to everything, to the way that they perform, to the way that they're writing music, to the way that they're collaborating. Like there's a, there's a hunger. And what's interesting is like hip hop is always associated with hunger of striving of, of grinding, right? Like that's, it's literally part of the lexicon, but rather than it becoming like some hyper macho toxic, like that means you can't fucking sleep and you got to sacrifice everything and you can't have whatever, whatever. I feel like this is about like, no, when I work hard, I have more friends. I have more connections. I have more abundance in my life. The more I work, the more cool shit happens. And like, it feels like the positive, wholesome version of what it is to work hard. And I feel like that's what I'm seeing more and more of more and more people putting out more music, setting up more shows again, like showing up and doing the work. And like, man, that's fucking exciting because when you're toiling and you feel like you're the only one working that way, it's a lonely, shitty feeling. And like, you have to carry quite the ego to believe you are the only one who's really working hard. But I think there's like, there's a neutral ground where it's like, yeah, I see other people working and it's fine and we support each other, high five, whatever. It's another thing to believe that like the more I support these people, the more the support comes back and the better I get and the, the cycle becomes virtuous and it becomes continuous. And like, I think that's when shit starts to snowball. So again, like I have no crystal ball. I have no ability to know the future, but my sense is that like this momentum, this vibration is only going to continue and keep growing. And so long as we keep it in a space where we realize that like, the encouragement and support of this community is what's ultimately creating that growth and not one person's individual amazingness. Like, ooh, Denver has a high fucking ceiling. We have a really high ceiling here. Do you think that's what makes it different from other perceived markets, other perceived places where music is happening but maybe not feeling as positive as it feels here? I think, I mean, so acknowledging I haven't spent time in in every other scene, but high level, when I think about LA, I think in LA, there's a lot of opportunity to get in a room with stars and that's how people look for breaks. And so it's a very different energy about who you know and what rooms you get in and who you're writing for and et cetera, et cetera. Doesn't mean they don't have an organic scene. Doesn't mean people aren't doing cool shit, but it like... LA and celebrity are synonymous. So that's going to be a huge part of it. New York is so much of that gritty grinding hustle culture. And I like, I may be wrong. I don't know everything, but like, I can't think of a lot of artists that feel like they're really representing New York right now. Um, I know ice spice is from New York. When I think of her, I don't think New York hip hop, you know, like I know Nicki Minaj is still putting out great fucking records. Um, but I feel like, again, like that the New York scene is so tied to the birthplace and that storyline. And like, I think it, in my brief experience of being there, like I see a lot of people in hip hop who have a lot of sharp elbows trying to say like, no, 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 this is our thing. This is the way we do it. Whereas here, I don't feel like anyone has that. It's like, you do it that way. That's fucking cool. I do it this way. Even better. We have different styles and we can learn from each other. Um, 
Atlanta has the club scene, Houston, uh, like such a background in chop and drill. And again, like I haven't spent time in these scenes. And so maybe in some of those smaller markets it's happening, but when there isn't an established hierarchy of like, you already have these fucking legends, you already have these stars. And so everything flows through. How do I get to that person to create an opportunity? Um, I just think it's different. And so in some ways, like, and again, Trev Rich has accomplished more than I might ever in music. There are people here who have put in the work and who have accomplished so much, but I don't see him as like a national charting artist. I don't think there's any big fish in this pond that everyone is desperately trying to get the attention of and work through. And I actually think that's so healthy for the scene. And so like, I don't know how many times I can say this. It's because I don't want anyone to be upset or offended, but like I so honor the respect that there are all the work that came before us. And I so love all the work that is continuing to happen. And I think so long as like both sides of that continue to support each other again, like, man, I think Denver can do some really cool shit. It feels like a blank piece of paper to me. Mm. <clears throat> Every time I think of this scene and I think comparatively to other scenes, scenes that I've been in, scenes that I know of, it feels like Denver is in a place where it's it's almost a blank piece of paper mm -hmm. where we get to write yes. the story of what Denver hip-hop is. Yes. What do you think of that? I think that's totally true. Um, and, I, like, this is going to sound negative bending. It's not intended to. Like, when I see shows for acts coming through Denver and I see the fervor and the support available to music in this city, Denver goes so fucking hard for music. Like, holy shit. Doesn't matter if it's a fucking Sunday night or Tuesday night, whatever. Like people will show up and go all out for shows here, which is beautiful. I don't always see that at hip hop shows, but again, I think it's because we're finding our identity. We're figuring out who we're performing for, what kind of energy we need to bring to those shows to start to create that environment. And so again, no one has done anything wrong. It's not because of, of any shortcomings. We're learning. We're, we're fucking figuring this out as we walk. Um, but I know that if we can start to connect to that bubbling energy that I see at so many shows here from so many different styles of artists who have come through and start to inject that more and more into the local scene. And like, then like the virtuous cycle gets even bigger. Cause now like the, the citizens of Denver, the residents here and Boulder and Colorado Springs and Fort Collins, broader Denver area, like the more they get excited about what's happening and bubbling here. And then the more that gets supported of the hip hop community, the more we want to show up for them and put on better and better shows. Like again, the good follows good. And so, and to your point, I think that only works if you don't have an established model that is like, nope, this is how we do it. This is how you show up. You have to get to this open mic, which is how you meet this promoter, which is how you get on that Cervantes, which is that, 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 that. Like, I don't, I haven't seen that. I don't think that like true linear path exists, but I actually think that's fucking cool as shit because I think that's going to allow us to create our own ways of doing that and growing and creating channels for people to collaborate and mix and, and meet each other. So yeah, like the blank paper analogy totally makes sense. It's all great. What are your hopes? What are your hopes for this, this show, this showcase that we're, that we're putting on? Yeah. Um, I mean, in some ways, like Jesse framed it really nicely. I want everyone who leaves that show at, at minimum to be carrying a feeling of like, I'm so glad I went to that or what a fucking cool thing they were all able to put together. And at best, maybe altered in the sense of like, I have a new sense of what is possible and available to me because of what I just saw. And again, I don't need to name or pick out how or why. It may be someone's performance. It may be the the strength of the lineup. It may be some of the MC work I want to do. It may be the lineup of vendors we have. It may be the whole fucking collective. Maybe because we sell out the venue and it's fucking spilling onto the street and people have never seen a show like that. I don't know. But like, this is always like a little bit of my perverse energy. Anytime my art or me as an individual, I as an individual, you know, intersect with someone, like I want them to feel changed as a result. And so I get to do that in little ways through my music, through my content, et cetera. This show feels like putting a magnifying glass on it and saying like, no, I'm going to add the power of a venue plus other acts, plus all these different textures, all with that same goal of like, how do I fundamentally change your perception of what is possible about your life, the world, yourself, et cetera, by letting you come, by having you come to this show. 
That's that's the hope, right? Um, and if we fall short of that and it's like, that was fucking dope and I'd love to go to another show, I'm okay. <laughs> I can totally live with that too. Any other thoughts? Any other, anything that's on your heart that you want to talk about in general? I mean, I alluded to it earlier. Like I, I have a lot of questions about like, what does it look like to completely detach myself from my ego and just show up in a way to be of service? And I do, I have like so much nervousness that that's going to kick me out of music. And like, I think that's because for a lot of my life, like when things start going well, that's when the fun evaporates. Like, this is going to sound so fucking silly. When I was a senior, I got voted to be senior prefect because I went to fucking Harry Potter land, but like basically the equivalent of class president my senior year. And like, it was supposed to be like the celebration of all this hard work and blah, blah, blah. And all it did was make other teachers and leaders in the school look at me as a source of authority and a new way of expecting me to move and be. Whereas like the way I got there was just by being myself. Like I always worked hard. I got good grades, played on sports teams, was generally nice to everyone. I would usually sit alone at lunch and let people come and fill on the table, whoever that was. Like that person is who got voted in. And then the person I wanted was like, you should be enforcing these rules. You should be showing up in this way. You should be bop, bop, bop. And so I, I feel like it's, and it's totally inner child shit of like, if this starts to go well, please don't put us back into the manager role. Like, please don't make us be in charge. Like, part of why this has been so wonderful and so fun is because I actually got to have fun. I got to be a creative person. I got to do all of these things. And so again, like it's a beautiful problem to have and I get to continue to navigate it, but like I'm putting it on the record here. That is my intention not to become a great producer of shows or a great promoter. I am doing this because I believe that continuing to invest in this community is what's going to make my life as an artist better and their lives as artists better so that we can continue to create together. I'm going to give you my opinion here because this is an open forum. Mm -hmm. I think it's okay. And at this stage in your life, in your career and the things that you are doing to take that role, that, that role that you in your mind have self-defined as like managerial boss, whatever words you use to describe that. Mm. And I, I think it's okay, and I think it's acceptable and reasonable if that is the path that ends up revealing itself to you, only because you don't have other people telling you how to do it. Mm. You get to choose how you show up as manager, as leader. Right. Um, and you have been doing that. And you do, you do already sit in a role of responsibility, and the, the golden part of that is you haven't seen it as that. Mm. And that's, in my opinion, the way that you should continue to see it as the paths open up for you. Because you can be and you are and you will be great at all of these different things that you are doing. It's just a matter of how you yourself view your role in all of that. Mm. And that is my humble opinion. Appreciate you. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Should we do some promo shit? Yeah, mic drop. Mic drop. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you again for tuning into this special episode. Again, this is all leading up to our performance at the making of Denver Legends at your mom's house on September 1st, right here in Denver, Colorado. You can get tickets from the link in the video description below, or you can reach out to me personally. I would love to see you there. Thank you.